the Bernina 880 Endless Embroidery with Susan Fears. Hi, welcome everyone. We're going to talk a little bit about endless embroidery and really dive into it a little bit more than what we did in our introduction or what you may have seen. Endless embroidery is something that you can do with the built-in embroidery motifs or other motifs that you bring in from Bernina Embroidery Collections. So you can really have a lot of fun with this, but it is designed so that you can fill a hoop with a design, put in your reference marks, and then you can embroider from hoop to hoop to hoop for very long borders, perhaps for a quilt, uh, maybe for uh, you know, a tablecloth or, or anything that requires a really long border, a, a beautiful edging for a jacket, you know, because a lot of these things are all longer than the hoop. So in our endless embroidery example here, you notice that you see the three motifs. You also see some reference marks. Those little arrows, they do stitch out, and that is what you, the needle uses as you go from hoop to hoop to hoop so that things line up. So endless embroidery, very fun, very successful, and I'm going to show you how you do that with embroidery motifs, but it can also be done using stitches. So all the stitches that live in the sewing side also live in the embroidery side. So there is a folder of stitches, and you can work with those stitches to create fun little endless embroidery patterns like what you see on the screen. And these are perfect for backdrops uh, for other embroideries. So that, let's say that you want to create this as a background texture. And then on top of this, you want to put another motif. So it's a great way to use it, even though you're seeing it as sort of a dark stitch out. You know, think about doing this as a tone on tone before you put your other embroidery on top of that, and then you have something really, really lovely. So let's take a look at how um, all of this works by going to our 880. This is our main menu embroidery screen, and if I want to work with stitches first, let's go to the stitch folder. Uh, I'll go into my decorative stitch folder, and I'm going to select a design and select my little motif, which is right here, my little flower. And I'm going to add using the add symbol and I'm going to go back to using my navigation, the little folder of stitches within the same decorative stitch menu using um, and selecting my stitch and I'm going to drag this over here and I really want this to connect about right there. The red line means I am out of bounds so now it's time to find a larger hoop. So we're going to just going to go to the oval hoop for right now and I'm going to show you how using your hoop sizes can help you have a little bit more um, fun or automation when you are working with em endless embroidery with stitches. So I have my design. I, this is what I'd like to endless embroidery. All of your tools are in your information icon. So this one with the three butterflies is endless embroidery. And when I duplicate that out, I get my three uh, designs. And you see my reference marks. This is great if this is what I'm going to do, but I'm not, so I'm going to turn these off. You also notice you have endless embroidery marks going in uh, eight, um, eight other directions. So you, you can go from, uh, you can go vertically, you can also go horizontally. So you just activate the reference marks that you need. Uh, I'm going to increase to another uh, set of designs and so that I have four motifs. and. That's all I'm going to do at this moment, and I'm going to check to confirm. Then I'm going to go to my hoop icon, and I'm going to select the jumbo hoop and X, and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Let's go back to my information icon and select endless embroidery, and now I have filled the endless embroidery hoop, but I've used the the, the length of the oval hoop to help determine what the size that I needed was going to be. Now, if you're not using that, you don't have to worry. This icon here is fit to hoop, which we'll look at in just a little bit. Now, this all looks really tight, and it's a beautiful orientation, but if I'm going to take a few of these away, and then I'm going to increase the spacing between the rows. This is going to allow me to see each of the elements, I think, a little bit better. Now, um, so this is a great way to uh, change that. You also can affect the spacing by turning your stitch length knob. You also can affect how many of these you have by using your stitch width knob. So again, you can really play around with this to create the background that you really like. When you love it, 
press your check mark and this is the background that we're going to importer um, you know underneath an embroidery design so to add a design to this let's um, go up to our top you have to sort of do a little scrolling to get through let's come down here go up and we'll add, we'll go back to our um, em em motifs and we'll find a flower that we want to add to this, perhaps this one. And if it seems a little too small, then you can always uh, enlarge it a little bit with your rescale icon. And then this would become a very pretty backdrop and look very similar to what you see on the screen right now because you would want it to be in a color that blends in but not competes with the design that you have. So this would be one way to use uh, endless embroidery with stitches. Now these stitches we brought in um, from the embroidery side, you can still bring them in from sewing. So the same thing where we did the combination on screen here, you could also have built the combination in sewing and brought that in. Um, not really necessary since all the stitches live here, but it's an option and it could be something that you need to do from time to time. So I'm going to close out of all of this. Now we're going to go back into embroidery. We're going to select a motif and we're going to go into folder number eight and folder number four where our flowers are and we're going to pick a little rose. I'm going to uh, select um, a little bit larger hoop. So I'm just going to go ahead and go for our jumbo hoop. And I'm going to duplicate because I want you to also think about this. You don't have to, we had the two elements and we treated them the same way. I'm going to have two elements. I'm going to treat them a little different. So I'm going to mirror, um, mirror image side to side with this one to create um, a prettier motif. And now when I select Enlist Embroidery, you can see how I have a really nice wave pattern um, moving along the screen. Now if I decided I wanted to have a few more, you see now I'm outside the hoop. So this is when Fit to Hoop comes into play. If this is the design that you want, and now you're, this is the, going to be the endless design that goes from hoop to hoop to hoop, turn your endless embroidery markers back on, check to confirm, and then we'll close out of this, and we're going to find a better hoop to embroider with, so the mega hoop would be great. And as I go into embroidery, and I'm going to attach my mega hoop, You'll see that I have 14 color changes, but I know that I've put the same flower on here about six times, so somewhere there's some duplication of colors. One thing that's very handy to turn on when you're embroidering a design that has been endlessly embroidered is to turn on resequence. And what resequence does, and you may have noticed it right now, I see the colors one at a time, and it's going to embroider each rose one at a time. But when I turn on resequence, now I get all the rosebuds at one time, and then all of the little vines. And then the last things are going to be my two endless markers. They do stitch out. They are a color stop, so don't forget to embroider those when you are working with endless embroidery. And then as you stitch these out, you would unhoop, and then you would rehoop with the markers inside the hoop and then you would stitch again. And that's pretty much how the endless embroidery works. Um, if you'd like to see a little bit more about endless embroidery, there is a project that's been posted to the experience section of the Bernina website. It's called Endlessly Ecstatic. Um, I, it may also be called a lovely lingerie. And we make this little lingerie bag. And you, we've embroidered the flap using on-screen editing techniques, but the front of or underneath the the cover of the flap or the part that you see behind the flap is endless embroidery of stitches and motifs. And I show you how to make multiple things the same size so that you can duplicate this out. And then I also show you through some pictures on how to get this, what the rehooping process is. So this might be something that you use in conjunction with um, this webinar tutorial so that you can have some practical practice working with endless embroidery. And again, to locate that, you will go to the Bernina website, select Experience, select Sewing and Embroidery, and then you will find it, um, you'll see it uh, as Lingerie Luxury. 
And when you select the lingerie luxury, you'll be able to download a PDF to your to your computer and print out the instructions so that you have them to work step by step in your project while you are working with endless embroidery. And I hope you'll enjoy that. And thank you everyone for joining us on our tutorial for endless embroidery. Have fun.